started to say good morning, but technically it's good afternoon. So I maybe I shouldn't have said that. That may uh, start your know, taste buds, uh, make them active, and you might get all excited about the food. I, I talk, I'm going to clarify one thing. I did come for a good meal. Okay. I've had a good meal so far. I have, uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed the services uh, at, at this point, and uh, hopefully it will continue that way, right? Right. Uh, one thing I want, a couple of things I, I need to say. I'm terrible with names. Please do not be offended. Some of you I'm trying to get familiar with, so please don't be offended if I don't remember your name. I barely remember my own name half the time, so please don't be offended in that. Uh, I've even tried little gimmicks or practices to help me learn people's names. Yeah, it doesn't for me anyway. It may for somebody else, but it doesn't for me, so. Have patience with me, please, especially in that area. Uh, and I want to correct one thing that I said last week. I don't know, for the benefit of those of you that are here, I attributed to Peter uh, a comment that was actually made by John, where I said that that we have seen with our eyes and handled with our hands and so forth. So it was John that said it. They were very close together, but nevertheless, I wanted to correct that. And uh, hopefully I've got that. And I, I have, I'm in, and I'm at that point. I'm 62 years plus, and I have to make notes every once in a while. Okay, so hopefully that does not offend anybody. I know uh, some people are very averse to that, but hey, you, you don't want me, you know, around if I don't keep myself collected together a little bit. Okay, and, and my comment that I made about notes years ago, and it's stayed with me is I've heard some preachers who were so guided by notes, scripted by it, that I literally wanted to go up and take them away from them. Then, on the other hand, I have heard some preachers that I said, Lord, I wish he had some notes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, it kind of like a bunny rabbit jumping all over the place and I was like, I was trying to stay with them and I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. So having said all of that, if I understood correctly, Sister Sandy, you said that today is the 60th anniversary. There. God bless. Okay, that, that's amazing. And hopefully my little uh, addition is correct here or multiplication. But 60 years means including, if I have calculated correctly, uh, leap years. 21,915 days, all right? Now let's put that in another perspective. That's 525,960 hours, all right? Boy, it just gets, it goes on minutes. It's 31,557,600 minutes. And now here's the number that I think is just absolutely staggering. If you've ever done any thinking about time and, and you know, our, our country, I, don't, I forget what the debt is right now, our national debt, it's in the trillions. And, and we just hear these numbers and it's like, oh, but my friend, listen, we're talking about big things, but one billion, Eight hundred and ninety-three million four hundred and fifty-six thousand seconds. What has happened in all of that time? Right? Is there any charter members here today? One? God bless you. You're an old man. <laughs> you qualify. <laughs> all right. I think he asked for prayer before, and he he needs it. All right. For for sure. I was two years old. At that time, about two and a half years old, and my subject today, if God will permit me. Now, if I give you all your options right now, whether we stop now and go back and eat, or you stay here for a few minutes and listen to me, what what you going to do? No, I'm not going to give you that option today. All right. Having said that, again, uh, I've written down a couple of things about time, and I want to use for my scriptural lesson this morning in the 90th Psalms. Psalm of Moses, one of the most probably, if 
one of the most familiar, I started to say the most familiar, but uh, outside of Psalms 23, I'm sure this might rank right up there. And um, beginning in the first verse, I'm just going to read a few verses there. Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place of all generations. Man, I wish that that was ever so true, don't you, about your life? That I could say that all of my generations long that God had been my dwelling place. I want it to be. But I must confess that I, I feel very weak in that area. And there are times when that I have put self first. You're not guilty of that, are you? None of you here surely undoubtedly are guilty of that terrible, egregious mistake in your lives. When we put ourselves before our Creator. But we do it all the time, don't we? And I'm glad for Sundays. I don't know about you. I'm glad for anniversaries that come around to try to remind us, if hopefully of nothing else. And I believe that, I'll get to my comment here. Hope, I, I believe that that's one reason God gave us the Sabbath. God, Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man and man not for the Sabbath. I believe that if nothing else, and it is very important that it, it brings us back to reality, so to speak. The reality of serving God. Because you, like me, probably go out there. You work maybe five, six, some of you more than that, uh, days a week. Uh, you're involved in ball games, watching your favorite shows, whatever it might be. And so for just a few minutes... In comparison to the, what was it, the uh, 1,893,000,000 staggering minutes that this church has been in existence, that just for a few minutes of your day, I hope something that's already happened here today has brought you, and perhaps for one young lady it has, to get you back to the reality of serving God and to know that time is short. All right? It's getting short for us, isn't it? You know, some of us, it's really, we, we really are aware of it. And the older I get, Lord, Thou has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, there ever Thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Wow. That's a, that's a, how do I want to say it? In the vernacular today, that's a heavy statement. When you think about from everlasting unto everlasting, what is time? My message this morning, I want to talk about time. The paradox of time. The 4th uh, century theologian Augustine was asked one time about time. And he, he paused for a few moments of time. And he said, I know what time is. I experience it all the time. But for me to explain it, I really don't know what time is. Think about it for just a minute. And here are some observations that I've copied down of what some people have talked about, about time. And just how perplexing it can be to us. One man amusingly said, time is what keeps everything from happening at once. All right? Well, that's kind of an amusing little statement, but it really does. It reflects how perplexing and, and the paradox of this thing that we call time is. And all I can say is that there, again, I'm going to, I'm not to make a big deal out of it, but I'm 62, and a long time ago, about 30 years ago, I thought, man, 62 is old. I don't feel that way anymore. Isn't that amazing? You know, where did my, when and where, what point in time did my perspective change? Well, it just happened kind of literally overnight to me. In a sense, I go to bed, I wake up the next morning, I'd be a day older. I never really went and looked on the calendar, Brother Mark, and I never said, oh my gosh, I'm a day older. I mark years. I mark years. I remember back on my 40th birthday, my wife orchestrated a surprise 40th birthday party for me. And, and you know, I felt old at 40. 
I thought, oh my gosh. I mean, they, they brought out these um, things that were basically in black and, you know, for, you know, suggesting that your life was over, you know? And, and you know, I, oh, you know, I'm, I realized that I hit that age. 50 didn't do much to me. 60, I ignored it. And so I intend to, if the Lord wills, I really intend to ignore 70. All right, if I make it that far, you know, uh, it seems like a long ways away, seven and a half years. But my experience tells me it's just going to be like tomorrow. And it's going to be here before I know it. And I, my suggestion is obvious. If you're here today and you're not taking account of your time that you have left here, you're making a huge mistake. You, know, you need to calculate. Now, maybe not every day. Wouldn't hurt you. But every one of us needs to calculate every day. How much time do I have left? And you're saying, I don't know. Well, that's the point, isn't it? You don't know how much time you've got left. Uh, the old die, somebody said, uh, the old must die, rather, but the young do. It happens all the time. And so a man or a woman or a boy or a girl that has reached a reasonable amount of time called the age of accountability, you need to be aware that time is short. It's fleeting. It's passing. Uh, the writer in, uh, I believe it was in uh, Job, uh, said it's faster than a weaver shuttle. And to put it in, well, I can't hardly do that because a lot of you don't even know what a typewriter is, do you? But I remember when I grew up learning to use a typewriter, especially an electric one, I'd get to the end of a sentence, and there you had to do all the calculating yourself, and I'd hit that button that was the return button, and zip! It would just go right back to the other side, to the left side, and so I could start another line. And oftentimes I'd get that messed up and not get my words just right. Aren't the calculus? Aren't computers wonderful? Word processes that do all that heavy thinking for us, you know, that people had to do for themselves. But that's how quickly time can get away from you. Seriously, honestly, earnestly think about it. Time is short. Some of you I'm looking out here are very young and you say, Preacher, I have no clue what you're talking about. And I understand that because I, believe it or not, was your age at one time. But now I'm getting more and more concerned about time. How have I spent that almost one billion seconds of my life. I'm not, I'm over that. I'm a little bit older than the church is. And so I probably eclipse the two billion seconds of my of my existence. What have I done with those two billion uh, seconds that God has so graciously allowed me to have? I wonder if I could break it down to how much of that was spent on my needs. Not much. Not enough. All right, I assure you of that. And here I suggest it. You know, I, I, it's not it's not practical to spend 24 hours of your time a day on your knees. Maybe sometimes it would be. I think there are times a song suggests that I used to say there are days when I like to be all alone with my Lord. And there may be, and there have been a few in the past, especially when I'm going to tell you things got so so heavy. On you, the burdens of life and the problems of life uh, that I, I literally it seemed like went through the whole day. If I wasn't finding a closet or a secret, a private place to get away, uh, there I was. Oh, Sandy, I'm sorry. I promised that I wouldn't move so much. So hopefully the the camera I won't get away from it. But no, there are times when yes. It might be appropriate, it might be advisable, it might be the most necessary thing that you've done in your life is to spend 24 straight hours with the Lord somewhere. Now I know He's with you all the time. He never leaves you. He never uh, forsakes you. But we do, don't we? Don't think about it, folks. 24 little hours. Again, I could do the math if you give me a little bit of time to suggest to you what we're, we're not talking about much in connection with 2 billion seconds of my time would it profit me greatly no doubt if I especially if I've got a need or if I've got a problem at the very best the words of Jesus
Jesus uh, would just soothe me where it says, Terry, don't worry. My grace is sufficient. He may not give me the answer I want immediately. Boy, we like things immediately, don't we? I mean, I get really frustrated when I put a bag of popcorn in the microwave these days, and I have to wait at least two minutes to get uh, that finished product, whereas I remember my grandmother popping corn on the stove, and, you know, it was like, Grandma, you're really doing something here. You know, it would take maybe, what, 30, well, maybe not that long, but it would take 10, 15 minutes, and then she'd have to clean up, and she all of this type of stuff that she'd have to deal with. Every once in a while, she'd make caramel popcorn for me, and I really like that. Now today we're going with punch a button. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just, in our religious lives, if we could just punch a button and say, oh, I want 60 seconds of the Lord right now. Alright, and hit it. And, you know, you have a timer there. That's probably a lot more than some of us spend. Notice I said some of us. That's probably some more than some of us spend in an average day with the Lord. Isn't it less than the time that it takes to pop a bag of popcorn in a microwave? Shame on us. No wonder we're in the shape we're in. No wonder we're not seeing people saved like we claim we'd like to be see them saved. No wonder our country's in the shape that is. I'm not going to give you any advice on who to vote for. Uh, but I can tell you one thing, folks. I believe God has an answer. And it may take more than 60 seconds to find it. We like it quick and easy today, don't we? Religion has never worked that way. Did you know that the Bible tells us that one day... And this is in Peter. He says, one day is, if the Lord, is with the Lord like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. God's got time. You may think that you're, you know, that we put pressure on God. Not at all. He's got time. In fact, folks, He made time. You understand that? He made time. He said, I'm going to give you time. Brother Kenny's giving us time. Man, you're looking old today. You know, thank you, right? That's all he needed to know, right? Uh, but seriously, you know, I remember, what was I came here in 1986. A lot of you looked younger then. Some of you weren't even born at that time. Uh, but folks, I'm telling you, we're all time is reaching out for us. Eternity is calling our name. And folks, some of us, it may be calling sooner than later. All right, what is time? The paradox of time. Someone suggested this, and again, I've got a few notes here. Let me find it if I can. What did I do with that? Uh, man, that's terrible. <laughs> if you can't get your notes straight up. Time is a duration involving an earlier and a later. Alright, so what that saying is, oh, by the way, do you know how to calculate your time? Go out to a cemetery next time you have an opportunity. And you know what, that's another exercise I think is very valuable for anybody, especially if you, parents, if you have young children, it might be advisable for you to take them out to a cemetery. Man, that's more of it, isn't it? Go walk them through a cemetery. I grew up in cemeteries. My mom used to love what they called decor decoration days uh, back then, what we call Memorial Day. Now, she had dragged me all over Kingdom Come to those cemeteries. Why, well, Uncle, Uncle Hart's over here, Aunt Sally's at this one, and I mean on that weekend uh, that Martha and every one of them had a little bit different times with that. She had dragged me all over the place, and I grew up not, not, you know what I'm saying. I grew up in a cemetery. But you go out there and you look at it. You know what your time on this earth is comprised of? Most of them may have something that are like, um, this will probably be what's on my tombstone if I even get one. It's going to be my name there. It's going to be born in 1950. And then there's going to be that little dash, depending on the size of the tombstone and everything. There's going to be that little dash there. That's my time here. And that's going to say died in that in that whatever year that my demise comes. Think about it. That's your life. I've even gone to some where they tried to put a little bit of an extra note in there about a person's life and maybe it was a sentence or something like that. I was down in North Carolina oh some time ago, wife and I were on vacation and we saw this historic site where some uh, Baptists had been buried and where one of the first churches 
churches in America was when I stopped there and there was just one man that on his grave that had quite a little bit, about a paragraph of what that he had done in his life and so forth. And I thought, man, that's neat because I was used to the little dash. All right? But that was it, a paragraph. How do you summarize your life now? I don't know how you are, Brother Mark, but how do you summarize your life now? Is it just a little dash? Is it a paragraph? Is it a sentence? Is it a chapter? Is it a book? We're writing a book, don't you know, every day of our life. So folks, we've just got we've got time. You know, and, and what do I want to say? And I'm gonna to try to draw this to a conclusion. And, and there's so many things that I'd love to talk about time, but I want to tell you something that you need to hear. There is enough time. How busy are all of you? Even some of you that are retired. Uh, don't you just complain? I hear this all the time from people that are a little bit older than me that are officially retired. They say, I don't know where time's going. It doesn't seem like I've got time to do anything anymore. I get up in the morning and drink a cup of coffee or whatever, and next thing I know it's time to go to bed, so to speak. But did you know, folks, that there is enough time in the day to serve God? There's enough time. God. We sometimes think we're doing something. I know I do. By just taking out here on one day of the week, setting aside two or three hours of the evening to serve God. And we think we've done something. We think we've really accomplished. Well, I hope we accomplished something. Because God basically did say at least one day of the week, I want you to, to remember me. But we've got time to serve God. We'll always have time. There are days, yesterday was just one of those crazy days at my house. And we have a lot of them. I've got, I've got, and what happens is that the more bodies you have coming into connection with you, my grandkids and so forth, the less time that you have. No, you don't. You've still got 24 hours in the day. You know? It's just how that you use them. Where that you put your, oh, I hate to use this word. It's one of the most overused words in the English language, priorities. I wish you'd take that word and throw it out, then I wouldn't have to deal with it. But they'd find another word that would mean the same thing, basically, wouldn't they? You've got to have your priorities right. When I get up in the morning, what's my priority? A cup of coffee. You've got to have it. I do, literally. <laughs> you know, I hate to say that. You know, I, I, it, it, and I can feel the strain if I don't get that cup of coffee. I got to have a few moments just to get the eyes open, you know, and, and, and going. You know what? Very, very seldom ever really enters my thinking is, you know, my number one priority today or this morning is, number one, I should have got up maybe 15 minutes early or maybe 30 minutes early just to spend a little time with the Lord. All right? I got things to do today, Lord. My schedule is full. We've even got all these smartphones and every other kind of smart gadget in the world to keep us connected and, and, and to make time easier on us, to schedule everything for us. And for all of that, I'm afraid we're spending less time with the Lord than we ever have before, aren't we? Everything calculated. The washing machines. I remember, again, I'm, I'm showing my age, but I remember my mom. One day of the week she had set aside to do the laundry. Why? Because it was an arduous task. I mean, she had, you know, it was just, and she was lucky to have one of those ringers, you know, that actually you didn't have to do it by hand. You know, and she didn't have to take the clothes out and hang them on the line and then however, according to the humidity and sun level, go out and check them every once in a while because now we've got a timer on our dryers and it goes off and alerts us whenever that our clothes are done. The same way with our washer. And you get where I'm going, don't you? I'm not trying to make you guilty. Yes, I am. I admit it. I want you to feel guilty about the time that you don't spend with God. Because we need to feel guilty about it. People today would like to wipe away the guilt feelings. Oh, we don't want little Johnny to feel guilty about anything. Little Johnny ought to feel guilty about some things. You know, I, I drive a school bus and I'm going to tell you, little Johnny ought to feel guilty about a lot. <laughs> Alright? In fact, I've got a call. I 
child got to make tomorrow uh, to some parents. And, and you know, they're, most of them you call anymore. My little Johnny wouldn't do that. Or my little Debbie wouldn't do that. They don't call them Johnny and Debbie anymore. I mean, they, they got names that blah, out there somewhere. But nonetheless, you know, oh, they wouldn't do that, would they? And I say, hey, we've got it on tape. You know what? I want you to think about this. God's got you on tape. Every one of you. Perfect recording up here. One of these days, if you get up to glory and you're standing before the great I Am, the one that occupies everlasting unto everlasting, and you say, Lord, I don't remember that. And he says, oh, you know, he doesn't have to go over and punch a button and rewind or anything like that to get you back to where you're at. Okay, he can, say, he can instantly take you uh, back to this day. Ooh, it's getting away from us, isn't it? Back to this day, as we call it in the year 2012. And he says, here's what you were doing. Or here's what you didn't do. Did you know that the sins of omission, in many respects, are just as bad as sins of commission? Yeah, they are. In fact, I'm almost persuaded that that's maybe one of our biggest ones these days. Oh, am I really downing you? I don't want to down you, but I want to spend a little time for the lost. And I want to tell you again what I have tried to emphasize this morning. Time is short. Time is short. From what connection or from what point of view? Well, any way you look at it, I believe time is short. If you live to be 70, like the Bible says, that is a possibility of it, 3, 4, and 10, it's still short. Again, I'm getting close to that, and I know how short it's getting. Alright? It's short. But what if you don't have three stories to you? As I said a little while ago, the little motto that I grew up hearing back in my home state of Missouri, in fact, I heard it to the point, I, I thought it was almost Bible until I started looking for it one day and couldn't find it. It says, the old must die, but the young do. Folks, that's truth whether it's in the Bible or not. And I could probably find a parallel scripture in the Bible that would support that. The old must die, but the young do. What if this is the day? Think about it. 24 hours that you've got this day. What is this? This is the, uh, what is it, the ninth day of, um, of September. What if this is the day that you have? Oh, that, that really puts perspective on it, doesn't it? Well, you say, but I expect to wake up tomorrow. You, you're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm saying, what if today is the day of salvation for you? And God, who knows everything, absolutely everything, from the beginning to the end, says to you, or He knows, and His Spirit is in some way communicating to you that this is your optimal time to seek the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I think the world makes a really silly mistake when it suggests that, oh, you can live any way that you want to. And you get down to the latter years of your life and you can, you know, you can just get down on your knees and Jesus is going to say, oh, that's all right. Well, it happens. I agree with you. It happens and it may be very powerfully suggested to people, but you're not sure that you have that. What if God is saying, again, to your heart right now, uh, through His Spirit, and He's saying, this is the best day that you're ever going to have to seek Me. Tomorrow, it's not going to be good. Not from my standpoint, but from your standpoint. You're going to be involved, you're going to be involved in other things tomorrow. You're going to, you know, and down the road you may find a, a, a boy or a girl that you really like, and then you're going to be devoting a lot of your time to them. It happens, doesn't it, guys? It, has, it happens, doesn't it, girls? And all of a sudden you don't have any time anymore. The next thing you know, you've got pride in your heart. You know, you, you, you're, I, I got that way. I was saved when I was 16, and, you know, I'm, I'm 16. 16-year-olds don't go down to a boarder's bench. 16-year-olds don't bow at all. We've got pride. We've got dignity. We know what we're doing. You've heard 16-year-olds say that, haven't you? Most of you were probably there to say it. But you know what? I found out now 16-year-olds don't know much. 
I'm glad I knew enough that on that day, it was in the spring of 1966, that God impressed my heart by His Spirit, and, and He, I thank God for it. Folks, He convinced me that this was my best opportunity to find Him. The Bible says, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call on Him while He is near. You know what that suggests to me? It suggests at the very least that, folks, that there may, again, there's going to be times down the road it's not going to be good for you. But He's saying today is the day of salvation if you will not harden your heart. So time is, in one sense, time is everything, isn't it? In one sense, it's really all that we have. And it's all known to us. The breath you're taking right now, about a second to inhale, exhale, something of that nature, that second came from God. And God knows you. And He knows that maybe 10 years down the road, there's no way that you're going to give in and seek Him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And so He may be wanting, He may find it necessary, I guess is the way I really want to say it. He might find it necessary to expend a lot of energy on you right now. Because you might be on the verge of getting away from Him. And believe me, I can say one thing I believe safely about my God. He doesn't want anybody to get away from Him. I'm going to say, if you perish, it's because it's your choice. I guess that's about as simple as I know how. Not very elegant. Not very profound, maybe. But that's the way it is. It's your choice today. And I'm going to tell you what. If I understand my God and my Savior like I do, the one that came down from eternity and inhabited this world in time to prove one thing, that He really cares for you. And that He doesn't want you to perish. I mean, some of His very last words before that He died on the cross were what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Some people say, oh, He was just talking about the soldiers and the others that were alive then that crucified Him. Well, I believe that's possibly so, but I also believe, know that He was projecting out and projecting back. And He was pleading with the Father to forgive them. For you don't know what you're doing. Gosh, I went for too many years. Too many years rejecting Him and what He wanted me to do. I still don't. It, it's a mystery to me today why that He saved me when I consider my life and, and what I'm worth, which is nothing. And yet, Jesus saved me. How much time do you have? Well, if you can tell me, well, I know that I, I think you have a revival scheduled somewhere in the future, don't you? Sometime in October. Oh, I'm reasonably sure that I'll make it till then. And then, oh, I said this a lot in my younger days, and then, Lord, I will seek You. No, my thought was, Lord, You let me go out. You let me live the life I want to while I'm young. And, and I get, get all the money and all that stuff that I want. And whenever I'm old and wrinkled, then I'll give my life to You. Well, that works sometimes, but not often. It is a statistical um, aberration, I guess I'd say, the numbers of people that are saved. Folks, as you get older, it just, it, you know, time gets away from you. And people, it's a rarity for somebody. Had a man down at Bethel when I was pastoring there. Wonderful man. One of the finest gentlemen I've ever seen in my life. And he, one day, uh, his wife had died and uh, he started coming to church and he was really earnest about it. I mean, he was going everywhere. He got saved when, in his late 60s, I think it was. And I'm going to tell you what, that doesn't happen often. I was just like, when I got the news, he, he was saved at a church down in the Bowling Green area. And when I got the news he'd been saved, I just couldn't hardly believe it. Because it's a rarity. How many of you were saved when you were uh, prior to being 10 years old? Raise your hand if you wouldn't mind. Okay. How many of you were saved from the age of 10 to 20? Raise your hand, please. How many of you were saved after you were 20 years old? Oh, it 
it's getting fewer, isn't it? How about 30, 40, 50? See what I'm saying to you? Today, especially if you're uh, in your 10 to 20, I'm going to say to you very legitimately, today is the day of salvation if you'll harden not your heart. You're never going to have a better time than now. So I'd like to have a song if, I, if somebody would help us please with a good song, an appropriate song of invitation at this time. Folks, I mean, I'm kind of at a somewhat of a, a disadvantage, I guess I'd say, not knowing a lot of you as well as I would probably like to, especially in light of this message I'm preaching. But I feel like there's somebody here that needs the Lord. Right? Is it you? Is it somebody else? I don't know. You have to be honest with the feelings from the Holy Spirit that you have. Is the Lord calling you? Is the Lord saying today is the day of salvation?